Hello, and welcome to I'll Try That, the beer review and news podcast. Each week, we'll be looking at a different brewery in the pursuit of hoppiness, analysing what makes them them, and of course, talking about the beer. In each episode, we'll talk about a beer-related news topic from around the world in the Hop Topic. Let's get going. I'll try that. The Beer Review and News Podcast. Here in London. Ding dong. I was thinking about this last night in bed. Smashed it. (laughs) Proof for success. There's a soon-to-be fur daddy. (laughs) Another one in the bag. I'm vetoing that. (laughs) On this week's Pursuit of Hoppiness, we'll be going to the beer that started all with Punk IPA and talking Brewdog. But first, the Hop Topic. Let's get stuck into the Hop Topic. Don't know about you guys, but I can't wait for the Hop Topic. Simo, what have you got for us? I'd like to interesting news about some sales from the US of A. Uh, the, the fact that they jumped up 22% in lockdown. Uh, this is 17% increase from 2019 uh, with beer and cider, etc. However, the online sales individually by themselves, 291% increase online. I love a good hot topic when we talk about stats. Oh. People are obviously buying and looking to still buy their beer and they can't go on trade. They can't go into bars and restaurants. Yeah. So they've turned to the next best thing, which is, of course, online. What's your thinking about buying beer online? So I I've start I didn't used to do it, but started maybe a year or so ago doing it a little bit more sort of thing because it's going to sound really pretentious. But as I got older, I didn't want to drink certain kinds of things. I was starting to look for maybe a bit more variety, something mixing up, something different, something out there. And the internet, as we all know, is a plethora of mad kinds of alcohols that you can get and. Beer in England, we like to get all those craft beers and ales that are coming in from America that you can just order online. So I'm I, I'm a big fan, and I can see why it's it's a booming industry. Um, for me, I actually bought alcohol online for the first time because of this podcast. Um, I don't think naturally I gravitated towards it because I always think, oh, the supermarkets are easy for me. So I've been doing a lot more of just looking and going to brewers' websites I've been purchasing directly to, from the brewers. And an open doorway to all these different brewers that I didn't know existed in, in my local area around London. You know, there's so many of them. It's yeah. great. But you know, you can just go online and they'll deliver. And if you're in their catchment area, can deliver within the hour. You know, That's the kind of delivery service they've been trying to do with, with COVID. With regards to that, is it, is it, do you think that is an expectation that a brewery would just be able, you have to be able, be able to buy it from their website? I think brewers have had to adapt to that. A lot of brewers have understood that they have to get it direct to consumers. They've gone through all the different channels, you know, on trade, off trade. They've gone through different wholesalers. That actually selling of beer is a very complicated beast because it has been. It's been made to, whereas actually you can go direct to consumers. And a lot of different industries have already done that. I, I genuinely think it's the way it's going to go. And I think it's the way it should go. We're very much on the move, on demand culture nowadays. And with Deliveroo that's come in and everything like that. And all these other services that just at the click of a button you can get there. And I think it, it makes sense for the beer industry or just the alcohol industry in general to go that route. Like during lockdown, I had cocktails delivered to me, which was a magical experience because I just didn't have to move. And they were there. It was wonderful. I think it's a fantastic idea. And I think if it's going to get more creative... I think there's some exciting times to come when it comes to the how how we will be getting our beer. I think we live in a world of convenience as well. We want things easily. The mass majority of people want things at your doorstep. And we have that in now with Amazon Prime delivering things the next day. We have ways to make things so accessible for you with a, a click of your finger rather than having to go out and get it. Companies have to understand that. And I think most of them do. And we live in a world where I think that is vitally Like If a company can't make it convenient for you, they're going to lose money. So there it is. We need an Amazon for beer delivery. Let's now, where is this repository? Jeff Bezos, get on it. And now for some pursuit of hoppiness. Pursuit of hoppiness. Pursuit of hoppiness. Pursuit of hoppiness. If you 
you guys don't mind, Pursuit of Happiness time. So this week, we're going to talk about BrewDog. Now, BrewDog started up in 2007, and it started the craft beer industry in the UK. I know like this, the whole trend that happened around mid-2000s, craft beer, resurgence in beer, it really started out in the US, you know, but BrewDog owned it here in the UK. It actually started in Scotland, in Aberdeen. It's one of rags to riches kind of stories that, you know, that started from nothing and is now a staple around the world. So for me, BrewDog got so much notoriety and came on my map in 2012 when they had this huge beef with Diageo. Do you guys hear about this? I did not. BrewDog were up for an award. It was the British Institute of Innkeeping, Scotland's annual awards, and they were up to win it. This is when they were the up and coming punk anti the big brewers brewery that was making beer out of, you know, the a- Aberdeenshire. So like anarchists. Yeah, beers, like, well, yeah. punk. It, uh, down yeah. to its very yeah, first yeah. essence of punk IPA. That's what they stood for. So, so they started out, they had this beef. Basically, Diageo pressured the, the governing body of the awards to not give the award to Brewdog. They said, if you give it to them, we'll pull our sponsorship and our funding of this and this is you know if anyone doesn't know Diageo is the world's largest not one of the world's largest drinks companies you know they own the likes of Guinness they are like Johnny Walker's David and Goliath exactly that moment and that ownership from Brewdog to say no this is not right and they put a lot of pump out into their blogs which have now become Brewdog TV they have their own network for content so I think this goes back to the essence of like they are marketers down its heart I, I always think they're the Nike of the brewing world and understand the value of brands and they have now, you see it around this, around the world, you know, Twitter followers, for example, you know, they've got uh, close to 150,000 people on Twitter. Pretty good. You know, and they've got 345,000 on Instagram. And they use their website, you know, through their blog posts, through their Brewdog media. They have so many different ways of putting out their content. They did a bit of research, which is they had their own TV series. TV series. TV series, which ran for three seasons. What year was this? Uh, 2013. Followed Walt and Dickie, the two owners. Of, it's on a now collapsed network called the Esquire Network. I think this goes back to, you know, they're, they're, they're looking for different ways of galvanizing their fan base. Mm. I mean, they crowdfunded their move into the US. So they raised... $30 million. $30 million. $30 million from crowdfunding to set them up. So you could join and become an equity for punks. You could become a punk investor yeah. in BrewDog to help them get into the US. I'm generally sad that I'm not one. Well, that's it. You're part of the club. You're part of the community. Yeah. How cool would that be? You'd then get a part of the share, I'd imagine, of, of, the, of the profits. And it's BrewDog. It's going to continue doing well. They are a big name now. I know that you can't say they've made it because they're going to keep going, but... They they have made actually they have made it completely. Well, well, I think that and I think that's an interesting point. From when do they go from being you know the punk IPA you know the anti the establishment to the establishment? Yeah, I mean they've they're now in Tesco's, which in the UK is is the largest supermarket chain. You know, it's like them being in a Kroger's. You know, it's like if you're anti against being in big supermarkets or against the bigger institutions, but you're now in it. I mean, it just makes sense because you need to be where people can buy you. And let's face it, I think they've done incredibly well by being in the slice of Tesco's or these big name supermarkets because we can now drink it. We can get hold of it. I found it really interesting how much they make statements and they back it up with like, so for instance, they have a BrewDog Believe part of their website. And I'm actually amazed at how it's almost so outspoken in what they say. They're very proud of their values. So for instance, you've got like, we believe in world-class craft beer, which again, testament to the flavors and what what they do they also have we believe in community ownership we believe in independence they have so many strong values that kind of punch through everywhere and i think it's amazing that they haven't backed down on their is it alternative viewpoints or the, the fact that they want to be different and i think that's really powerful that they've kept pushing through they're martin it's very consistent you know they know what they stand for and they push that out and and it is to be the the alter ego is to yeah. be the, the off the cusp and you know you can see that from just for the names of it i mean the one we're specifically drinking now is called punk ipa yeah but the nomenclature across their beers and portfolio is is hilarious you know they've got what nanny state mm. um what's the other ones that we've, we've like elvis like juice pony Ford. club pony club i love that I, one. my favorite one i, I mean say. what we're drinking right now i love the fact that on the side it says the beer that started it all it's 5.6 percent 
you know, it's what we've come to expect from these, you know, more modern craft brewers, IPAs, yeah. who basically up the ABV, but for the ability to bring more taste into it. And that's how they justify it, right? I, I mean, I act, I think it's such a, you know, you're drinking punk IPA. It's such a distinguishing taste. You then. know it. it yeah. is. They've, they've got somehow to be refreshing and filling at the same time. And it's just, there's something wonderful about it. I mean, I personally don't actually know a specific time that I'd say I, I would be drinking Punk RBA because I think it kind of fits so many different situations. For me, it's not a session ale. I couldn't drink this all day. Ooh. 5.6% Mate. personally is not for me. Drinks all day, every day. Well, just a quick side note for that. You know, they opened up a, a hotel. A hotel in Columbus, Ohio, a brew dog called the Dog House, which <laughs> offers beer round every corner from the shower to the breakfast menu. Amazing. Amazing. The use of drones, so you can get a drone delivery of beers in the Columbus, in the you know, in the local area to the breweries, you know, around Australia, wherever Berlin, they're in Berlin as well. You yeah, know, as a big brewery, you know, they have this amazing knack of making things go viral. I mean, I saw a, a video where they made the the highest calorie beer, where they drove one of those pedalo bikes, bar bikes, you might have seen yeah. one of those, yeah. yeah, and they had fried up bacon and they'd added maple syrup, and they'd use that to make the beer to make the highest calorie beer. Oh. While cycling around Columbus Island. Right. What? That's not... <laughs> <laughs> that. But it, again, it's about the, the, the machine, the media machine behind it, which is helping to make them such a big and popular environment. I, I suppose that the, the, the marketing is very much to the, the, the younger crowd would be the best. So the people in your late 20s or like early 20s into your late 20s, they go. And they seem to be, as a, as a company, they seem to be sticking to some, and I suppose going with the trends and stuff like that and just keep finding really great things that they just seem to do. If you if you work for them as a company, you can go on to paternity leave, which is if you get a dog, they'll give you off a week's paid vacation. As a soon-to-be fur daddy, I would love that to be the case. I mean, a, a fur daddy. Mm. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Moving on swiftly, um, <laughs> so something. Uh, <laughs> Who said that? We have, to, we have to cut that. That was no, no, that's I just heard that back. That's it. That's that's my favourite um, thing you've said this whole time. So t- thinking about how good they are at marketing. And the fact that obviously they're very big on Twitter. I recently found out that they have started a brew dog drive through. Now, I found this absolutely fascinating. This is the tweet. As part of our commitment to sustainability, we're going to open four BrewDog drive throughs Now, this is across the world. There's only four of them. One of them in the UK, one of them in America. The idea is this collection point is a hub for electric vehicles, closed loop of zero waste packaging, uh, such as growlers, mini kegs, and returnable bottles. And it's got hashtag BrewDog tomorrow. It just, everything about it is so clever. Now, interestingly, it's got a bit of backlash from some people saying, well, you're making us drive. How is that sustainable? I don't know if that's missing the point slightly of the whole... No, I think it was a good point. It was drink away, wasn't it? It's yeah. yeah. Driving and drinking do not go together. But, but, but then it's the idea that you can go get just BrewDog go home and have a good time on BrewDog. I think it depends on what location. I mean, if you're talking about Columbus, Ohio, you're talking about like most places in the Midwest of America, you drive to get everywhere. Yeah. yeah. You know, this isn't an environment where you'll just can jump up, like walk down the street or jump on a bus like you'll have to drive to get to places. So that in that setting, that drive through to go and pick up the beer, it's basically a drive through shop or it's store incredible. by yeah, the sound of things. What a clever idea. Like yeah. they're Also, they're using the idea of like, you know, we're going to be eco-friendly. We're going to say, right, have an electric car. Be BrewDog, which for me says BrewDog are modern. Yeah. Because guess what? Electric vehicles, they are the things that people are pushing. They talk a lot about sustainability, as most brewers do. But I, what I found quite interesting about them is that they are really owning this area of being the alter ego, the being the kind of the, the outside of the norm, yeah. port the alternative. Yeah. 97% of their beers are vegan. That's just insane. Oh, really? So it's I down to its essence that. of the beer. When they can do, they'll make it uh, suitable for everyone. No doubt, that probably actually probably costs them. So they could probably make it a cheaper way to make. Brewery. As in, yeah. this is what I'm saying is like they probably know cheaper ways, but they're thinking, do you know what? We don't need to. So, and I think honestly, I think it, you know, as a company who was they are new in comparison to some of the other beers that we've tried and we've tasted that have been around for hundreds of years. This company is a new one. They get to do a fresh start. What should a beer company be from the very start? Yeah. If you look at the website in comparison to others, it just punches at you. Like it's such an incredible, and I know it's just a website, but it makes you think 
modern. It makes you think in a, in in a division. Oh, I can't say the word. In a, innovation. I'll go with. I, I found some more. So they brewed it on a boat on a Brooklyn rooftop on a plane. It claims to have made the world's most, as we said, calorific, most caffeinated, and most expensive beer. <laughs> And yes, the beer, then they sold a beer in taxidermy squirrels as well. I mean, let's face it. If you're talking about a company that's alternative in the beer market, Brewdog kind of hits that bill. 100%. It's fun. And I, I think actually going back to the innovation side of things, they have a whole alcohol-free range. Yeah. You, know, you can buy their, you know, it's called Punk AF. Punk alcohol free, you know, those kind of beers. And I've tried the lager. We'll talk about that probably in, in a dry January episode, but it's, it's okay. It's, you know, non alcohol. Yeah. But talking about their kind of non alcohol commitment, they created the world's first ever non alcoholic beer pub here in London. Yeah. It's the first ever bar that serves solely non alcoholic beer. It's the first one of its kind. Fortunately, it's launched in February of 2020. And let's face it, no one's really been going there. No, yeah. <laughs> Since the whole <laughs> what, this what year's I, been happening. What I feel like I'm hearing like through this conversation is they like being the first they like being that new interesting thing for instance we are the first to do this we are the first to do that that is something to admire that they're willing to do it because it's a risk it's a massive risk for a company to do something new i think they're just looking at it in a way of but how do we continue to keep people interested in what we're doing yeah and let's face it they're doing some really interesting stuff i think what's recently happened with the whole barnard castle you know, <laughs> can somebody, limited edition. Some, somebody needs to explain and elaborate on this whole situation because I truly don't understand it. Coronavirus central. You know, we're talking about an environment where the governments are telling us have got stepped in and doing more oversight than we're probably used to in most Western nations. And this is absolute stomping grounds for Brewdog to get involved and be the whole we're the punks of this world. And this is really <laughs> reaching into their whole kind of like communications. It's their wheelhouse, isn't it? It's exactly their wheelhouse. It's like we're being oppressed. This is how we're talking about this thing. So what happened recently here within the UK along with all countries doing specific lockdowns and restrictions, is a major political advisor who'd been one of the main people saying about stay at home, stay at home don't go and don't break the curfews. No unnecessary travel. No unnecessary travel. Was caught driving from one end of the country to the other <laughs> to a place called Barnard Castle and gave some very flimsy answers as to why he was doing that. Now, I would always say that companies try not to get into the, the political landscape or try to get political. Brewdog don't really shy away from that. But this was such a pop culture and such a popular opinion that this political figure was in the wrong mm -hmm. that they launched this limited edition beer. But what was fascinating about it is true to Brewdog's style, this wasn't just a here's a beer. They went to the people through the product development process. So they went on Instagram. You could go and vote for the different versions of the of the design of Amazing. what this beer could be. Yeah. And they and they don't just do this for that limited edition. They recently re like showed their whole like 12 month product pipeline, all the different liquids and different beers they're going to yeah. come out and they got people to vote on which ones they'd want to see first. That instantly makes people feel a part of a company instantly. Like for me that's like, well, I'm now part of this company. I've had a I've had a say. And that's what people want, isn't it? When when they have something they love, they want to be a part of it. To, to say how popular it was, so many people went onto the website in the first nine hours, um, it crashed the website. It was the Barnard Castle situation. Yeah, the traffic crashed the Brewdog website. And they had so many pre-orders for the beer, able to donate 100,000 bottles of sanitizer. We haven't even mentioned the fact that they've been making and sanitizer yeah. for the, and yeah. giving it to the NHS. Any profits went to the NHS. Like one of the very first companies to say that, that they were doing this. I mean, we could talk about this company for hours. They have so many different interesting news and quirks for themselves that they're like brew for success. So what do we what do we think of the, the liquid? What do we think of Punk IPA? How do we describe it to the listeners and the viewers? For me, when I drink it, it's got a kick to it. Like, you know you're drinking something. <laughs> like, it's got a kick... It's got a kick and you know... That 5.6 yeah, is there. Like, mm. it's, yeah. it's the aftertaste that I really like. So you get the initial hit and then the linger on the tongue afterwards. A slightly sour linger, it's, which I quite like. It's fizzy. It's a fizzy beer, which is what we know now for like craft IPAs. Yeah. yeah. It very is. I mean, this is, as they say, it's the one that starts it all for them. Hmm. But it was... It, it's. It wouldn't be like a, an IPA that you'd have, you know, for more traditional brewers. Yeah. This is their take and stamp on this old classic recipe. What do you think it tastes like? So for me, drinking the Guinness, it's iconic. You know what you're drinking. When you drink this, it feels the same. Like I know what I'm drinking. I know it's a punk IPA made by Brewdog. So it's not like it's actually like a Guinness and it's like a stout, but it tastes like it because it's iconic and it's recognized it. Perfect explanation, Joe. Thank you very much. <laughs>
So as always, we'll put links in the description for Twitter, Instagram, their social media handles, and tapped in their website. Definitely one to check out for. Oh, and completely. Be on the lookout 100%. for. One hundred percent. Always drink responsibly, and if you or anyone else needs some help, go to drinkaware.co.uk for more information. <laughs>